The new water-cooled steel flame deflector aims to precisely protect the underneath of the pad from the fury of the raptors. This was something that was clearly needed if you saw what those raptors did to the concrete pad during Starship's first flight. The pressure of the raptor's exhaust essentially broke through and snuck under the concrete and into the sand underneath the launch pad, creating a crater. To solve this, SpaceX had to build a really strong foundation, something that wouldn't let the raptors go through as easily. But on top of that foundation, instead of flat concrete, they installed a giant steel plate that the raptors would be firing against. This plate would not be eroded as easily as the concrete, reducing the chance for pressure to go into the ground. But even this was enhanced, so to speak, with water channels inside of it and holes that would let this water come out in some sort of cooling system. This is when this goes from just being a plate to what SpaceX calls a flame deflector system. In the words of Elon Musk, this system is like an upside down shower head. The steel plate is filled with water at high pressure that is then released through holes. The water is then vaporized from the heat of the engines. By doing this, the vaporized water takes the heat away, which would have otherwise gone to the steel plate. Without the water, the steel would most likely melt, and instead of raining pieces of concrete, we would have raining pieces of molten steel. In order to achieve this feat, SpaceX had to put together not just a lot of concrete, rebar, and the big water-cooled steel plate under the pad, but it also had to lay down a lot of pipes and bring in new water tanks and pressure tanks. The flow of water begins in Brownsville. Here, tanker trucks take the water mainly from fire hydrants, but they may also take it from other municipal water storage tanks. These then travel down Highway 4 to the launch site. Here at the launch site, the trucks unload the water into these seven large storage tanks for use in the flame deflector. Multiple sets of pressure tanks, which are generally called multiple element gas containers, hold the nitrogen used to push the water out to the pad. Two main pipes channel the water and discharge it into three manifolds that then distribute it into the plate. One pipe, the one of smaller diameter, supplies one of the manifolds while the other, larger diameter, supplies the remaining two via the use of a Y-shaped connector. At around T-7 seconds, the water-cooled steel flame deflector system is activated. A relief valve opens on each of the pipes, leading to the plate to control the initial flow of water through the plate. Three seconds later, at T-4 seconds, these valves close and the water reaches full pressure. At T-3 seconds, the engine startup sequence begins and within less than two seconds, all engines should be up and running at 50% thrust. The engine should run at this level for about a second or so until the time comes to commit for a launch. When it's time to shut the system down, a set of relief valves on the water tanks open and liberate all the pressure in the system, which creates a really loud noise. With the pressure gone, the water recedes and stops flowing through the plate. 